Hey everybody, it's Ben Feingold again with another video in our Gambit series. The, this time we're going to discuss the Von Hennig Shara Gambit. With a name like that, it's got to be good. Um, so this is in the Queen's Gambit. And we made a video already of the Queen's Gambit accepted where black takes on c4. e6, the Queen's Gambit declined, knight c3. And now one of the most aggressive lines for black is the Tarash defense. Some grandmasters don't like it. They call it the trash defense. No, I, I guess that's just me. And after c5, the most common move is c takes d5, trying to saddle black eventually with an isolated d-pawn. And in 90% of grandmaster games, white black just takes on d5. But the von Hennig Shara gambit is c takes d4. This gambit's a pawn, and black gets a lot of development. It actually reminds me of a Smith Mora in reverse where the E-pawn and the D-pawn are gone. It's very similar. I'm not sure who that favors even, but... Okay, there's two ways for white to play. When I... I don't play this with black, um, but I play it with white, because I play D4, C4, Knight, C3 all the time. And on the few occasions I face this, I've played Queen A4 check. So we'll look at Queen takes D4 first, which is fine. Knight C6 attacking the queen. If they take the knight, which is not a good move, then you... You take their queen, they, the pawn is pinned. The queen goes back usually to d1, but doesn't matter because after you take, they take with a queen. Actually, the engine prefers black if white plays knight takes d5, knight f6. It doesn't like the fact that white has no development and the position's wide open and my bishops can move and white can never castle, and so forth. So, okay, queen takes is the preferred move. Black doesn't want to trade queens. Black wants to harass white's queen. Queen c7 is the main move. Knight f3, knight f6, attacking the queen on d5. Okay, now here we have a split. White can play queen d3 or queen b3. We'll look at queen d3 first. Uh, bishop e6 is one of many moves. Black can play bishop g4, bishop c5, lots of moves. I like bishop e6 myself. E3, getting ready to play bishop e2 in castle for white. Rook d8, queen c2. Now here we would like to play knight b4 and get more attack, but bishop e5 check is annoying. Some people play a6 here, but I like just bishop e7 and castles. I just think black has good compensation for a pawn. Again, it reminds me of a reverse Smith Mora, except there's no pawns here and here, which means black has access to these squares and an open e-file, and white doesn't have this pawn to defend, so you could argue who that favors. Um, but you can see black has six pieces developed, okay, and he's ready to castle, one, two, three, four, five, six, and white has three, and white's made, let's see, one, two, three, four, five queen moves. So you can see that black has good compensation for a pawn, lots of open play, interesting position. Another way white can play is queen b3. Okay, then bishop e6 for sure, attacking the queen. Queen a4, pinning the knight. Bishop c5, the bishop's nice on c5. e3, and castles. And once again, in positions like these, black just has really open play, nice position, sacrifice to pawn, it is a gambit, and black, white is sort of passive. White's made a lot of queen moves here as well. White's bishop on c1 has trouble getting out. It's hard for white to use his extra pawn. And black has a good initiative for a pawn. And white doesn't have anything immediate like, oh no, I'm a pawn down, I'm going to lose. There's, extra pawn doesn't mean anything now. It's going to mean something if you don't get more counterplay in 20 or 30 moves. Um, now the other way to play the von Henning Shara Gambit for white is to not take on d4. Queen takes d4 we just looked at. But to play queen a4 check. Okay. After the taking on d4, queen a4 check is what I play. And then I take this. And I think the bishop on d7 is a little misplaced. Okay, and what most people do to punish me is they castle queenside because they've already played bishop d7 instead of the bishop being on c8 and the knight being on c6. So they're like, okay, I've already got bishop d7 in. It's not active on d7, but I'm going to castle queenside and harass you. So queen d1 is a move you normally don't get to play when the bishop is on c8 because when bishop e6 attacks your queen and your queen goes back to d1, which we didn't look at, then black plays rook d8 attacking the queen. 
Okay, now we can't play rook g8 attacking the queen because our queen's still on d8 and our bishop's on d7. So queen d1 is very reasonable. Okay, bishop b4. I don't think black should castle a queen side. I think black's king is a little exposed there. I think black should just have a big lean in development, open files, easy play, and good compensation for a pawn. And at the lower levels, I think white's going to have a lot of trouble here getting his pieces to good squares, developing properly, and stopping black's initiative. It's not easy to put the white queen anywhere because all the files are open to the queen. Black can play rook d8, rook c8, and the queen has to find a home. If the queen is on a4, that's not such a good place. It's on b3, we can harass it. So this gives excellent play for black. Um, it's a gambit. Most grandmasters won't play it with black, but a few have tried it, including Hikaru Nakamura in the U.S. Championship. He's played the Von Henning Shara Gambit. Okay, so um, it has a cool name. That's the main reason to play it. And you get really nice, easy, active play. Sometimes with black, you're pretty passive, especially in the Queen's Gambit Declined. Not in this variation. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Grandmaster Ben Feingold. Another video in our Gambit series. And I'll see you again next time with more Gambit series videos. Bye.